Thanks a lot, uh, Philippe. Very happy to, to be here, virtually at least. So uh, I want to explain, uh, talk a little bit about uh, system of Fourier polynomial equation. So my, my, this is the subject I want to talk about. So uh, I will have a number n, which is the number of variables, and then a number r, which is the expected dimension of the zero set. So then I take, let me say, this is like a, in the context, a family of uh, polynomials Fi over a field. Indeed, I will take Laurent polynomials. I will admit uh, negative exponents. I will take I, n minus r of them, right? And I will denote by z their zero set. No? So the zero set, I will take it naturally in the multiplicative group, in the n-dimensional multiplicative group, right? Okay, uh, which is uh, what I will also call a torus, no? like an algebraic torus, because the the set of um, of complex points of it, for instance, if your field is of characteristic zero, is uh, what's uh, typically called the, the algebraic torus. So the basic question is a big question: is how large is can can it be this uh, this zero set? How large can it be z? Or in a slightly, uh, in a more precise sense, uh, whether I can read the size, the size of my of my zero set, with uh, in terms of my input uh, polynomials without uh, actually computing it. Okay, just in terms of easy data that I can read from my from my polynomials. So of course this is a very general question, not well defined. For instance, if your if your field is any field, okay, an arbitrary field then you might, uh, you, you might think about the, the cardinality if your set is finite. And otherwise, if you can think of the degree of this set with respect to a family of, uh, of line band. And if, if you are dealing with a field that is geofintine, like the field of rational, the field of, um, the field of uh, functions of, uh, of some normal variety, then you might talk about the height. So uh, this is the, the, what interests us. Can I read the height of the zero set in terms of some height of the um, some height of the uh, of the polynomials? So let me go to an example. Let me think about a simple example: the polynomial f in two variables. This is an affine polynomials in two variables: one plus six plus x plus y. Okay, uh, and then let me consider an arbitrary a point in the torus, uh, an arbitrary point omega uh, in a q bar star to the square. And I will use that point to twist my, my given polynomial. So the, this twist that will be written with omega star uh, of f is indeed the inverse image of uh, that, um, the inverse image of that uh, polynomial with respect to the multiplication map of the torus. And in elementary terms, it is the evaluation of f when you multiply the variables by the coordinates of that point. In this case, it is the also the fine polynomial one plus omega one x plus omega two y. So I will consider specifically a um, twist by roots of unity, root twist by torsion points of the algebraic torus. So if this uh, if this point omega is then a point with a, a, which is which is a pair of uh, roots of unity, then for instance uh, the coefficients of this twist have the same absolute value as the coefficients of my original polynomial, as the coefficient of f, and then not only for the Archimedean absolute value but also for all the periodic ones. Okay, so nice. So all these twists have the same somehow they give polynomials of the same height in principle. But uh, of course, the, the height of the zero set is not independent of that. The, the, the height of the zero set uh, will depend on omega. Okay, so if I am considering the, 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 the intersection of f with this twist, okay, so that is the common solution of one plus x plus y and one plus omega one x plus omega two y, the bell height does depend on omega. For instance, if you take if you take this uh, distortion point, no? uh, the third root of unity and it's a square, then the common solution will be also torsion point and the veil height 
will be zero, of course, because it is a torsion point. And if you take this other uh, one, minus one and i, then you get a point that is not torsion and the height is not zero. Okay. So, uh, so well, of course, the question was too naive. Uh, and the answer was uh, simply no, you cannot read directly in terms, at least in terms of uh, quantities that are independent uh, for each of the, of the given polynomial. Of course, it, you maybe some produce, produce something that takes into account the, 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 the relative position of the polynomials, you might uh, obtain something. I don't know uh, the answer for that. But if you look for quantities that depend on the individual F5s, you cannot. So I modify my question. So I ask is, instead if, that is, if, if I can pick some, some typical value, some representative value. So for instance, I consider the mean. That is, I will look at all rules of unity okay, of increasing degrees uh, and then okay, increasing order, sorry. And then I will, um, I will compute the mean of the, of the, of the given heights and try to see if the, if the limit exists. So the answer in this case is yes. So let me, this is the thing in the right, in the left hand side is the mean that is, I am taking sign D, which is the order. Then this is the group of the roof of unity to the square, right? I'm taking, I should take here the cardinality, there is a typo here, the cardinality of this, of this group. So the square indeed. Um, and then I'm taking the sum of the heights, the bail height of, uh, of this solution and this limit exists and in, indeed it is this number which is, can be written as a quotient of uh, two special values of a set of function. That is two set of three over three uh, times set of two. Okay. And here you have some uh, sage experiments that we did when we didn't know that uh, that uh, the, the exact expression. Okay. This, these were all experiments we did with uh, Roberto Waldi. By the way, I uh, forgot to say I'm, 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 I'm explaining car, uh, ongoing work with him, Roberto Waldi from Regensburg. Okay, so you see with uh, d equal to uh, 36, you have this plot of roots, and finally with d equal 100, you see that the, the values are concentrated. Uh, well, uh, with uh, indeed they are concentrated around uh, under, around this particular value, because you don't know you not only have this phenomenon that the height the, 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 the average height is converging to something, but indeed you have a concentration phenomenon. Most heights are are going to to this value, right? Okay, so this is um, this is a bit of motivation to explain my problem. So let me go. To the, to, the, to, to the more technical context. So my context will be uh, toric varieties, right? I will study this, this problem within the, 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 the Arachelov geometry of toric varieties. So let me, um, let me explain first what's uh, the degrees of, of cycles in toric varieties. This is classical material, of course. So in, in, on the one hand, I will take as before, I will take as before, uh, Lorentz polynomials in n variables, I will take n minus r of them. So I, I can, I, I will extract some information from these Lorentz polynomials. On the one hand, I can, I, I will, cons I will consider the zero set. So the zero set, I will modify it slightly to fit it better within intersection theory. It is rather the R cycle. So it uh, associated to this family of polynomials, to the polynomial F n minus r up to, uh, yeah, yes, up to fn, right? Uh, so it is the r dimensional part of the scheme defined by these polynomials and with the corresponding multiplicities, of course. So this on the one hand, and then for each individual polynomial, I have here the, uh, the, um, the Newton polytope, right? Newton polytope is, uh, is defined as the convex hole uh, of the of the exponents that appear in my in my Laurent polynomial, so this is a lattice, pol a lattice polytope. It's a polytope in R n with whose uh, whose exponents are are integral, right? So this is my information from from my Laurent polynomials. Then I will took, take x a toric variety with this torus with the torus the multiplicative group, right? 
So toric variety, it is, uh, it is just uh, a compactification of the torus that is equivariant, okay? That has the property that the action of the torus extends to, um, extends to, the, to the whole variety. So you can think of the finite space, the project. Well, indeed, sorry, there is something missing here. I should ask complete. No, I want a complete toric variety. So you can think of the projective space or the product of, uh, of projective spaces, or you can think of, um, of hills over surfaces or toric bundles, et cetera, et cetera. So uh, to do intersection theory, I will need uh, divisors, Cartier divisors. So these DIs are uh, Cartier divisors on my toric varieties that will be NEF, that is the associate uh, degrees will be non-negative and will be toric in the sense that they are invariant under, uh, under, the, toric, uh, under the torus action. For instance, if you are uh, in the projective space, this uh, Cartier divisor can be identified with, uh, with uh, associated by divisors uh, with hypersurfaces and they can be, the, they, they will be uh, some of the um, hyperplanes at infinity, the, the different coordinate hyper, hyperplanes of my projective space. I will take in any case R of them. So then, this from this from these uh, devices, I, I can obtain some combinatorial information, which is a lattice polyton. There is a construction, a bit more involved, but uh, but classical too, that to a divisor associates a lattice polyton. And uh, well, and indeed, uh, it's a dictionary. I mean, you can get back your net toric divisor from that lattice point. And then you come to the uh, to the classical, very well known Bernstein theorem from the 70s, from the from the beginnings of the theory of toric varieties. If, if, if you ask some mild genericity conditions to your system of Laurent polynomials. Mm -hmm which is essentially that they define a proper intersection and they, uh, the zero set has no component outside the torus, then you can compute the degree. Then you have a yes answer to my questions in the, question in the first slide, that is the degree, the size in some sense of the zero set with respect to this family of divisors is given by a combinatorial formula, which is what you have in the right hand side. Here you have the uh, polytops of the divisors, and here you have the Newton polytops of the, poly of the polynomials. And everything is measured in terms of the so-called mixed volume function. Mixed volume uh, is a function that generalizes the usual volume, okay? and it is adapted to take as input n, uh, n convex bodies of, uh, of the Euclidean space. Okay. So this is, um, this is the model for us. So in any case, I want to recall uh, a famous um, quotation by Christophe Soule. Uh, Soule is, is one of the founding fathers of, uh, of Arachel of Geometry, which is the branch where I am treating this problem. So he said, I'm, I'm, I will read it. So the reader and the reader is likely to discover a new and interesting question by just ask, asking for the arithmetic analog of her favorite statement in classical algebraic geometry. So Arachel of geometry is, um, no, is, a, is, a, is a branch of arithmetic geometry that uh, treats, uh, that treats uh, schemes uh, over the integers with tools with, uh, from periodic analysis and, and complex analysis uh, among others to get analogs of, of uh, arithmetic analogs of theorem of, of classical algebraic geometry. And since uh, one of my favorite uh, statements in classical algebraic geometry is that uh, Bernstein theorem, well, okay, this is what I want to get. I want to get an arithmetic analog of that. So let me go with, the, with, the, with some precisions, okay? So uh, I, I want to take a Diophantine uh, field, like the fields of rational for simplicity, but of course all that extends to, to bigger generality. So I will take as an ambient a toric variety X with this torus multiplicative group over the rationals. Okay? And the fundamental object is this D-bar. Okay. D-bar 
is what's called a semi-positive toric metricid divisor on, uh, on, on my variety. Okay? So this is a pair where on the one hand you have a Cartier divisor and on the other hand you have a family of things. These things are indexed by the places of the field, okay? the places of the rational, that is the Archimedean place and all the periodic ones. And for each of them, you have uh, you have um, a metric. Okay, this is the metric that has to be semi-positive. Technical notion has to be rotation invariant. This means some invariance, which is the toric analog um, of of of, of uh, well the the, ana the, the analog uh, of being toric in this setting. And these are metrics on a line bundle. This is the the, the viadic analytification of the uh, line bundle associated to D. Okay. Uh, so the, the, the key here is that this object has also, I mean, through the theory that I developed with Burgos and Philippon, we could associate to this object an analog of the polytope. So the, the divisor itself uh, has uh, has, has associated uh, a polytope. Okay? And to the metricid divisor, we can associate a family, an adelic family of functions. Each of the functions is called a roof function. It's roof function because it will be like, um, like the roof of a small house, because we're talking about functions that are concave on the polytope. So concave functions are very much used for constructing roof of houses. And this is why we we call it like that. So you have this adelic function, the, so a so, so bunch of an infinite uh, family of functions like that. Indeed, you have only a, a finite number of them which are non-trivial. There is, a, there is a, a, I mean, there is a number of finite number of places where they are arbitrary, and for the rest of the places, they are just the zero function. And so with this, uh, this, uh, this family is uh, what we propose as an analog, as an analog of the polytope. And to, 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 to support that claim, we prove this uh, theorem that tells you that if you have a family of uh, if metricid, a toric metricid divisor, VI, you have n plus one from zero up to n, then using that, you can compute this arithmetic intersection number. So in this uh, theory by Arakelo, Faltings, uh, Chile, Sule, and Zhang, among others, this H is the arithmetic analog of, uh, is the arithmetic uh, appearance right, of the degree, arithmetic intersection number. So it can be computed in terms of, combi of so-called combinatorial data. It is an adelic sum. So the, there is one, one, one term for each place of, um, of the field of rationals, and each term consists of something that depends on the root functions of the given of the given divisors, and then uh, they are measured through the mixed integral function. A mixed integral is the uh, extension or the analog of the mixed volume for con uh, concave functions. Instead of looking just to 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 convex to to convex bodies, you are looking at uh, you are looking at uh, functions on them, okay. And in that case, when you have only one function, it's, it's natural to consider the integral of the function over the over the polytope or over the convex body. And when you take n plus one concave functions, you can consider the mixed integral. Here, this picture taken from from one from one of my papers you see uh, the situation. Here I, I'm considering in the first diagram, the place at infinity. For this place at infinity, there are two functions, this one and this one, they are concave. Indeed, they are, they are linear in this example. And then the, 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 the full line consists of the so-called subconvolution of this concave, uh, concave function, which is a kind of Minkowski sum of functions. And then the mixed integral uh, is, the, is the integral of this function minus the integral of the component one. Okay. 
has nice properties, it is symmetric, it is uh, multilinear, and in some cases like this one, it can be computed. And so this, this picture which corresponds to, to, to a curve and two matrices divisors that have uh, non-trivial contributions for the place at infinity, the place two and the place three, uh, give explicit functions and you can actually compute using this formula the height. Good. So um, we have not finished yet with the problem, I mean, uh, in the sense that um, in the geometric case, when you compute the degree uh, of your toric variety, the degree of the ambient space, this is, uh, you have like automatically the, uh, as, as, a, as a consequence, you have a, a automatically the degree of the cycles, no? by using, using just the, 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 the Bessou form. It is not the case uh, in the arithmetic setting because the, the, the arithmetic Bessou has also, uh, has also some correction term. Okay, so I will come, I will come back to that later. So in any case, we cannot readily deduce from this what is going to happen to the cycle, not to the, for instance, for hypersurfaces or zero dimensional cycles. So uh, let me advance. So this was done indeed by Waldi in his thesis um, for hypersurfaces. So uh, he uh, considers, let, let me say, consider uh, one Laurent polynomial f in n variables. As before, he introduces a function. This function is called the Ronkin function. That is one of these functions for each place. This is a function defined over a new Euclidean space. And the way of defining it is going through the torus and considering the function logarithm of absolute value and then computing the mean of this function in the fiber the mean with respect to a natural measure there. So for instance, uh, when, when you take the place at infinity, then a Ronkin function, the Ronkin function is, uh, is a Mahler measure. It's indeed the Mahler measure of a twist of your given polynomial by some number, by, some, by the exponential of your, of your point. So in the, so in the Archimedean case, the Ronkin function, which was named by that by Passar and Rulgar, much, much earlier than, than Waldi, is indeed a, fun, is a function for which each of the values, each of its values is a Mahler measure. It's computed as a Mahler measure. Okay? So it's well-defined. It is not very easy to compute, but uh, it is well-defined. Um, and when the and when the place is uh, is uh, it's not at the medium, then it is explicit. Then your your Ronkin function is a piecewise linear function. Is the minimum between all these affine functions. This is an affine function. No? The scalar product of exponent m with u is an affine uh, uh, minus this constant constant. So you get what's called a tropical polynomial. This is indeed the tropicalization, the viadic tropicalization of your given Laurent polynomial. In, in the language of, of tropical geometry. Okay, so um, okay, so given a polynomial, finally, also I somehow insist, you compute a family of functions of this space. Then the next step is considering is considering the Legendre Fenchel dual. No? This is a, this uh, this uh, duality of Legendre and Fenchel comes from convex analysis. And we'll give you through some definition, which is, uh, is given in terms of uh, some optimization problem, gives you a function on the polytope. Okay. I mean, the, the, the fact that the domain is the polytope is a result, it's not obvious, but uh, given the definition of the Ronkin function, you find a, a concave function on the polytope. Okay. So uh, the, the, the statement somehow, just to advance a little bit, is that this family of function that is the, the Legendre Fenchel dual of the Ronkin functions of your Laurent polynomials are a kind of arithmetic analog of the Newton polytope, right? That is, you want to, um, you want to, uh, to go to, uh, when you go to the arithmetic problem, 
you want you need to produce this this analog because it disappeared in in burst theory right and so the the statement is this the, these are the this this is uh, this is this analog uh, to support this uh, there is uh, there is the theorem uh, that tells you that if you have a family of semi positive toric metrized divisors on the toric variety you have n of them you start in zero you end up with n minus one, then the height, the arithmetic intersection number, the height of your hypersurface surfaces can be uh, can be written exactly in combinatorial terms as an adelic sum, exactly as before, where you have the roof functions of your given divisors, and uh, also this dual uh, Legendre Fenchel dual of your ranking function. This is a formula for a height of this hypersurface, uh, even if this hypersurface is not toric, of course, no? which is, this is the, the interesting thing of, of this theorem. Okay. I don't know if there are questions, uh, in this, if this is the case, please uh, interrupt me, no problem. Okay, so now I want to go to the higher codimension case. So, uh, so now I am joining what I was uh, the, the, the example and the considerations at the beginning. Okay, my example at the beginning was uh, an example in codimension two. Okay, uh, we have seen there that uh, you cannot hope for a formula like this okay? uh, because uh, because of the fact that. Uh, that the height is not is not uh, is you cannot read the height from the ranking functions directly because, in particular, because the ranking functions are independent of the twist. If you twist your polynomial by a torsion point, you will get the same ranking function. Okay, uh, so it's impossible to to get something that depends only on them because the height does depend on the on the torsion point. So, so for that we have. First of all, we have conjecture. Okay, uh, so it's uh, well. This conjecture is quite natural when once you are in the inside the problem. Uh, we have not proven it yet in this in this generality, but at least it's uh, we can propose it. So uh, now I will take a family of polynomials, not only one, but uh, n minus r of them, as before, of Laurent polynomials. I will take them. Um, I will tell them uh, the, the semi-positive divisors. And then additionally, I will take a, I will take a family, a, a torsion point of this product of tori. So I have here n minus r tori, that is one torus, one, uh, one torus for each uh, Laurent polynomial, torsion points, okay, that is points with whose coordinates are um, roots of unity, and I suppose that this sequence, because I have a sequence indeed, is a strict, okay, in the sense of equidistributional theory. A strict means that it eventually escapes any proper algebraic subgroup of the given torus. So our statement is that uh, not just the average, but indeed the limit, in this case, the limit of this intersection number should converge to to a value, and this value is given by an expression that generalizes um, generalizes the, the results, my results with burgos Philippon and the result of Wadi. It's very natural. In the, you have a adelic sum of mixed integrals, and then root functions corresponding to metrized divisors and uh, dual some working functions. This is the concept. Okay. So, um, I'm sorry I had to be a little bit technical. Of course, I am skipping many, many details, but um, at least this conjecture, this statement can be, uh, in some instances, can be, um, it's, it's like more than elementary. No? So let me just uh, mention an elementary consequence, an elementary particular case no? that can be understood without any Arakelov geometry, without any intersection theory. This is, uh, I think this is much more elementary. That is, you can specialize to the case when your variety is uh, the projective space and dimensional projective space. 
And then you can take as a metrisic device or the uh, hyperplane at infinity equipped with a canonical metric. And you can take R equal to zero. This is a typo, this should be a zero, okay? So in any case, you are looking at, in this case, you have veil height, okay? You are looking at the veil height of points in a projective space. And this uh, cycle is, a, is zero dimensional. R is the dimension. That's why it should be a zero and not a one. So this uh, conjecture is saying that the limit of the uh, bail heights of the uh, zero sets of the twist of, uh, of the given family of Laurel polynomials hmm, is going to be given by this combinatorial formula, where here you put the, uh, the a function that is the zero function, the zero function on the standard simplex of Rn. The standard simplex is the, the convex, the convex hull of, um, of the standard basis on the zero. And you put the zero function there. And here you put the ranking, the duals of ranking function. Okay. Of course, uh, I could have avoided all the previous theory, but on the other hand, uh, I just present this case, but uh, I really find that uh, the previous theory is, 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 is important in, in order to be able to understand the, the meaning of this formula, not the analogy with the Bernstein theory. Okay. So by the way, the previous conjecture is what we uh, would propose. Let me come back indeed. Uh, this is what we, we propose as, as, as the arithmetic analog of Bernstein theorem, because on the one hand, you have some like typical value of the height. No? You might think in a very, very, approximative um, form, you might think this is the, the value of the height for generic polynomials in some sense. Uh, if you think that this genericity, uh, this genericity um, within polynomials with the, with the same uh, ranking function. And on the right hand side, it's, it's, it, this is more clearly an analog of the, of the mixed volume of the, of the polytops I showed before. Okay, so uh, now I want to go ahead. So what we could prove? Well, we could, could, we could prove for, for the moment. Uh, this is really, really small compared with the generality, but nevertheless, it is something. Well, of course, the, 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 we're looking at the case of co-dimension two, where the things is really non-trivial. In, in that, so in dimension two, in any case, and co-dimension two or dimension zero, we could prove the case where, where the two polynomials are affine. That is, they are two polynomials, not Laurent polynomials, polynomials of degree one. This is the case we have for the moment. So in particular, this has as a corollary, has as a corollary the statement at the B from the beginning. The bail height of the zero set of this polynomial, this should be one plus X plus Y. That is also a typo here, this is a Y, and also here. Uh, and this uh, and this twisted version of it are converging to the mixed integral of the Archimedean part, okay? Because all the other all the other um, all the other contributions are zero, and then this can be computed in this case to this one. So uh, now I want to enter a little bit into the into the techniques uh, for proving that. So first of all, I, I will compute. I, I will prove this corollary, okay? Because it's, it's it's more. There is this first part is direct. The second part is not that direct. So this is the this is the proof of the corollary from the theorem. So on the one hand, you can show that uh, for um, the places, uh, the periodic places, the non-Archimedean places, the formula that tells you that the um, which is the ranking function in that case also tells you that the dual is the zero function. So in this case, uh, the periodic contributions are mixed integrals of the functions, the zero function on a polytope. And by the multilinearity properties of mixed integral, uh, it is, it is uh, easy to see in this case that um, that is the, the value is zero. So the, 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 the periodic parts do not contribute in this case. So all the difficulty is in the Archimedean part. Okay. So uh, this the function that appears here inside without the check, 
is the Runkin function of the polynomial one plus x plus y. I have explained that this Runkin function indeed uh, is um, it contains uh, in this case uh, well uh, is um, contains uh, Mahler measures of many twists, many twists of this affine form, uh, affine and polynomial. Uh, and in this case, uh, you are uh, you need to compute it. You need to know the Mahler measure of an arbitrary uh, affine polynomial of an arbitrary polynomial of degree one. Okay, luckily this is known. No? All these Mahler measures have been computed by Mayo some twenty years ago, or a little bit more, in his thesis, I think. And they, you have to look at the amoeba. This is the amoeba. This picture is the amoeba, the Archimedean amoeba of this polynomial. Okay, that is the image of, of, of this curve, of the, of the curve that it uh, the, um, defines in the torus through the evaluation map. It has this shape. So outside, outside the amoeba, the function, the wronging function is very easy. It's just uh, a linear function. Here in this part is zero, in this part is the function y, and in this part is the function x, essentially. But inside it has a complicated formula that depends on the, on the block Digner uh, dialog item, right? So the definition, the, I mean, this actual computation is not easy, and computing the dual is even more complicated. So just to be short, we don't have an idea what this function is. I mean, we don't have an explicit formula for this. But the mixed integral, as, 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 the, as, the, as the integral, for instance, uh, can be computed uh, in terms of the border. Okay, you can use a formula similar to Stokes. You can go to the border, and you can profit from the asymptotics of the ranking functions, which are easy to compute on the one hand. And also, uh, the fact that you know uh, what appears here is the motion pair, the real motion pair measure of these functions, which were studied by Passat and Rulgar, and tells you that the, the motion pair measure of this function is the Lebesgue measure on the amoeba, restricted to the amoeba. That makes the magic in this case. Divided by some constant, which is this pi to the square. Pi to the square is the Lebesgue measure of the, of the whole amoeba. Now you compute it. So you are bound to compute a, a piecewise linear function on an amoeba. And indeed, this can be done. And you obtain from this uh, the, the value of, uh, you, you get the, the, the series, usual series expansion of set of three. You get the expression here that you, you can rearrange to this, the value I explained. OK. So this is how we, how we made this computation. And now coming back to the theorem and to the general case. So how can we prove the theorem for, uh, that is the particular case of dimension two of, for the ambient, dimension zero for the cycle, two affine polynomials. Uh, it's quite representative of the general case, uh, but of course easier and this is why we could, we could do it. So then you have to take an additional metricic divisor. And then you can think that this metricic divisor is again a hyperplane divisor with a canonical matrix, so you get the height. And then you take your uh, your strict sequence of torsion points, right? And you use, but you want to use the arithmetic bezoom because you go, you want to go from the uh, zero-dimensional case to the one-dimensional case, which is hypersurface. It's the case we know thanks to the result of one. So here, this tells you that the veil height or the, 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 the height with respect to the bar of the cycle defined by F and the twist of G, right? Because indeed one of the twists, you can save it because if you twist the whole family, uh, the zero set, um, I mean, by, you, you, you might, in a, you might come obtain that zero set by just twisting one of them. I mean, the, the diagonal action of the torus is not, um, I mean, has no effect on the zero set. In any case, the height of this uh, zero cycle, the height of this point, indeed, in this case, this point in P2, is by the arithmetic, arithmetic Bessou theorem equal to the height of the curve defined by F with respect to some arbitrary metricic divisor that you can choose. This E bar is any 
the other device or you can choose, metricity device or you can choose, plus some correction term that is this long frame. Let me just forget about this for the moment and concentrate on this. This one observation, first observation is that if you choose this metricity device or wisely, indeed it is the so-called ronking metricity device or G. Okay. It's called ronking because it's a toric metricity device or whose associate family of concave functions are exactly these duals of ronking function. Okay, it's, 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 it's a construction that you can do when you start from a given polynomial, you can construct a natural uh, metricity divisor on your toric variety, on your P2 in this case. If you choose it like that, then this part uh, will be equal, like all the theorems will be equal to the formula you want. This will be equal to the sum of the mixed integrals you want, okay? So finally, if you make this choice, what you need is to show that all this quantity is going to zero when your um, when your uh, when your L or when the when your total points get more and more involved, more and more generic. Okay. Okay. So uh, let me skip the, the 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 exact terms here. I will maybe uh, explain it them better in the next slide. In any case, making some, I am making some jump. Of course, I cannot do all the details. But when you you under, you you enter into the formula that was there, the second part, then you uh, you see the following thing. Uh, then, so let me de define for each v, each place v, uh, a function on the uh, multiplicative group of the completion of the algebraic closure of the, uh, well, of, of uh, R or, of, sorry, or of, uh, well, you, you understand, <laughs> of Q R V, right? So it is a function which might take minus infinite values, okay? And it is defined through some integral thing, okay? In a point X, you use that point to, 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 to twist your given polynomial G, and you consider the log of the absolute values of that twist, and you uh, integrate that with respect to the uh, to the to the motion per measure. This is the the, the measure uh, associated, uh, well considered in, in Arakel of geometry that uh, that um, is associated to my d bar. Okay, uh, the d bar is the is the metricity divisor which um, which dictates the, the heights I am um, I am considering. Okay. Okay, why this function can be minus infinity? Well, I am doing the integral over a curve, over the curve of f. If by chance g, by good chance or bad chance, I don't know, if g is a twist of f, for instance, if g, if, uh, if g is equal to f, then for some point, for the point one, in that case, you will have, uh, you are integrating uh, an identical minus infinity uh, over your curve, so there, in, in this case, is in the case where, where f and g differ by a twist, okay, which is the example I show at the beginning, you get a function that has a singularity, that has a value uh, minus infinity. So in any case, this function is, a, we can show it is an analytic function, except from, from some, some places where it has, log, it may have logarithmic singularity. And when you look at the second term in the previous formula, you realize that uh, tending that this term tend to zero is equivalent to the fact that the integrals of this function along Galois orbits of your tors torsion points and the sum over all places converge to some expression. So this is somehow it is an it's, it's an it's a, an equidistribution problem. You have to show that uh, that uh, for this so-called test function, for this particular function that appears in high theory, uh, your uh, uh, this, uh, this uh, the integrals over the Galois orbits and the sum over all places converge to what it should. Okay. 
So the difficulty is, is exactly here. The technical difficulty of the problem is, is exactly here. First of all, you are integrating functions with logarithmic singularity, as in the title here, right? Whereas when you want to use the standard, the standard equidistribu equidistribution theorems like the, 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 the theorem of Kulmo, um, uh, Zhang and Spiro, etc., Bilou, all the functions considered, considered there are continuous with compact support. Right. And moreover, you want to consider all places at the same time. You want to consider the sum over all places. Okay. Okay. So in this particular case, which is, uh, I mean, has the advantage of being very explicit. Of course, when you have two affine, uh, two affine uh, polynomials, the solution is explicit and you can work with it and some things becomes easier. So we could do it. And so to solve it, we had to use these, these tools. I mean, first of all, we had to study the periodic distribution of these torsion points. Okay. And, and then uh, this, this periodic distribution of torsion point indeed is what ensures us that you can get rid of, of all the places except a finite number of them. That is this, uh, this study of uh, reductions of torsion points is what allows us to go from adelic to local. First of all. Secondly, uh, in the Archimedean place, you have to use bounds for linear forms in logarithm. That is the classical Baker theorem, Alan Baker theorem on that. Whereas for the, the, the periodic places, uh, they are uh, easier to treat with the tate volock theorem on linear forms in periodic linear forms in, in roots of the, okay. This is indeed, uh, this is uh, indeed technically this problem is, is very similar to the so-called E conjecture okay, that uh, was studied for instance by Baker Rumeli and also by, by Dimitrov uh, and Abeger, uh, because you, you deal exactly with the same, uh, typical, the same kind of uh, technical problem. I think my time is almost over. I will stop here. Thanks a lot.